All right, Hyeniacs and everyone else wa uh, watching, listening to this right now. You know, we've hit a pretty fucked up point in America within the last week. I mean, we got cops executing people, we got people executing cops, and then cops retaliating by strapping a bomb to a fucking robot and blowing a guy up, which, hey, Texas, you're giving the terrorist ideas. Nah, I'm just kidding. I know it's too early for jokes, but I will say this about that incident. Hey, you know what? They did what they had to do. It may have been extreme, but we didn't know how many people were in there. Or who or what we were even looking for. Until, you know, the, the dust is still clearing. It's definitely not over. Um, you know, and then on top of all that, we got Hillary Clinton getting off of federal charges. Which, hey, good for her. And, you know, let's let's just pardon everyone else while we're at it um, so let's let's start from the actual beginning um, I'm gonna go back a few weeks to a month because I'll pull more relevance uh, relevance to this in a you know in a little bit here as I go further along but let's start with the Orlando shooter um, you know guy who just mentally snapped decided he wanted to go shoot up a gay bar because it was against his moral beliefs he thought it was an executable sin and you know yelled out the name of ISIS which I don't know if that was ever clarified if he was actually part of them or not I should actually dig into that at some point so okay we had that and then just a couple days ago we had a man down in Baton Rouge Rouge however you want to pronounce it um, who is outside of a store selling CDs and DVDs which is illegal to do it is a federal crime and I understand that you know I'm gonna look through both ends of the spectrum on this one and I'm gonna do my best to keep an open mind through all of these scenarios as we go along so stick with me so let's start with okay modern society's point of view this man was already um, he already had a very violent criminal record that went almost a mile long um, he was resisting arrest and based on one of the videos that was shown after he was down after he was well he wasn't fully detained his arms were still free um, apparently you could see his arms moving down and he was shot he was executed and where one of his arms were going was apparently very relevant to where there was a gun found on so I mean that's okay that's gonna be modern society's point of view on it. The way I see it is it could have been handled a little bit differently, but at the same time, yes, if you're a cop in that situation, the man's already resisting, already showing resilience, you're already getting timid, you're already getting scared, you, and unfortunately, they pulled the trigger instead of thinking more clearly as to how it could have been dealt with. They could have tased him. They, you know, could have flipped him over onto his stomach and you know, handcuffed him. There were plenty of enough cops there to do that, but you know what? That's not how it played out. And it's very unfortunate that it happened because I, again, this is going into the other perspective. You know, I'm still not exactly sure what the cops were actually called there for. They did state that they were responding to a call from a homeless man, which I know people are going to nitpick the logic there. How does a homeless man have a cell phone? Well, let's not forget that there are Obama phones which are free for people to get so okay I'm not I'm just pointing that out there. so we don't know exactly what it was for though um, the way I see it about this man selling CDs and DVDs okay they obviously saw that and at least this is my guess this is my speculation they saw that he was doing something illegal and I look at it like this this man's a felon what do we know about felons? They're probably the most oppressed group of people out there. I don't care what color felon you are, if you're a felon, you have a record, and anytime you apply for a job or even a place to live, it shows up. Just point blank and simple, it shows up. So the way I see it, this man was not selling firearms, he wasn't selling illegal firearms, he wasn't selling illegal drugs, he was selling entertainment. I understand, it's still illegal the way he was doing it. But for a felon, for a person labeled as a criminal for the rest of their lives, 
that's probably about as, you know, legit as you can get. Because, again, the majority of jobs out there, I mean, you're lucky. You will be absolutely goddamn lucky if you can get a job at a fast food place with a criminal record. So, that's that incident, and those are both sides of it. I still think it could have been dealt with a little bit more maturely, but that, you know, it's very convoluted. Um, let's move on to the second one. This just happened near my hometown, you know, in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, there was a couple driving that had their four-year-old child in the back seat. They were pulled over for a taillight or something like that, and apparently, you know, the man driving was confronted by the officer. The officer told him to pull out his license and registration, his identification, all that. The man did the proper thing. He informed the officer he had a firearm on him and that he had his conceal and carry, which is what you're supposed to do. He also had no criminal record, no gang affiliation. He worked a good job. He worked for St. Paul Public Schools, for Christ's sake. You know, and, you know, to go on the other point of view for just a moment, just for a moment, yes, I understand that this is a very timid situation for a police officer, because A, traffic stops are one of the top situations that a officer gets killed in. And this cop was a rookie, he's only been on the force for a few years, and in the area that he was in, which trust me, it's a pretty rough area. To know that the person you're confronting has a weapon, you know, okay, I can understand how you would get scared. The cop pulled out his weapon, which is part of protocol, but he jumped the trigger, which is not what you do. This man informed you he had his conceal and carry, and he had a firearm on him. Obviously, he's trying to be compliant. I'm pretty sure if a man planned to shoot you, he wouldn't let you know until he already pulled it out and pulled the trigger. That's what I find upsetting about this situation. Do I understand that the cop was upset? Do I understand that he was afraid? Yes. But here's another thing. There was a four-year-old child right in the back seat. What if you had missed him? What if it had hit her? Especially at point-blank range. Nine-millimeter bullets are known to go through a person if it's at a very close proximity. Even if you hit your target, there's still the chance that that bullet could have gone through and hit that child. Again, he was trying to be compliant. It was ab There was absolutely no reason. No reason at all whatsoever. He was already reaching back as he was informing you. He was doing what you told him to do. You told him to reach back, pull out his wallet, and he was doing that, and he informed you of what it was. You screamed, don't reach back, but he was already doing it, so you used that as an excuse to shoot him. Now, a lot of people are saying it's a racial thing. Maybe it is. I mean, the cop was Asian, and there's always been known to be a long animosity between blacks and Asians. It's one of the biggest triggers that started the Watts riots back in the 90s. So, I mean, maybe it could be racial tension. Maybe it could just be that it was the cop did not have enough experience to handle his grit. Either way, that falls on him as an individual. I'm not going to reflect that or even the Baton Rouge incident on cops as an entirety because it's so easy to speculate and say what if this, what if that, solution this, solution that, option A, option C, option Z. It's so easy to speculate when you have no idea what that kind of situation is like, or if you simply weren't there for it. Especially goes like this. And it's not necessarily to completely contradict myself, but here's the thing. About these videos that we've seen about these situations, they're after the fact of what happened. Now, how do you record a situation before that? I mean, you don't know how it's going to play out. You don't. You can't just assume because an officer confronts you that you can pull out your phone and expect something to happen. 
because for all you know, there's a lot of times where these things do get peacefully resolved. Or that someone may get arrested but not killed. So, I mean, those are those two situations. And then last night, you know, you got all these protesters out. Which, hey, I believe in peaceful protest. If you ask me what I think about Black Lives Matter, I'll give you a mixed... I'll give you mixed feelings on it. Do I believe in their cause? That they have a good positive message yes do I believe in how they go about it no I don't believe that you should block traffic to try and make a point I don't believe that you should disrupt the lives of others to try and get your point across because all you're gonna do is make them more upset however I understand the frustration and the motive behind it so I'm not necessarily against it I mean, especially because, you know, last night, just, again, over in St. Paul, my hometown, you have protesters out there throwing rocks at police officers for no reason. It was not instigated. Anytime the police are part of these things, they're actually there to help protect the protesters, which was even demonstrated last night in Dallas, Texas, when gunfires were shot off. No one knew what was going on, no one knew what the reason was, for all we knew it was someone trying to disrupt the protesters. Because, I mean, two of the protesters, two civilians, were wounded by gunfire. Um, so the cops did the best they could to get the protesters out of the area, keep them protected, and handle the situation. I believe it was five of them ended up getting killed. Six of them are at least wounded right now. Um, they got a few of the suspects in hand which didn't want to talk uh, the most one of them would say at first is that it's the end of times that there's bombs that they've planted all over the place which is a very scary and intimidating threat considering the situation and then there was another one saying that the reason that he did it is because he was upset about you know all the police brutality against black people and that he wanted to punish white people mostly white police officers Again, do I understand the anger and the frustration behind it? Yes. But here's where it relates back to the Orlando shooting. The Orlando shooter claimed ISIS and that, you know, that was his biggest motivation for doing it, but it didn't technically make him a member. Now, at this point, we can't assume that the shooters or the people involved in this incident were actually Black Lives Matter. They may claim that it was for the same cause, but we don't know if they were actually part of it or not yet. Once that answer becomes more clear, we can speculate on it more. Um, as for the main shooter himself, fuck. Yeah, you know, like I said before, I mean, the cops figured the best solution was to strap a bomb to a robot, send it in there, and blow him up. America, right? I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, all these events. I mean, it's. I mean, we got so many people right now. Like, where the hell do we go at this point? At this point, it's like a back and forth thing where no one can find a sensible solution. And now you have conspiracy theorists jumping up the ass about how, due to the civil conflict, there's now a fear that the current president can stop the elections and declare martial law. Which, my God. You're going to have groups of people going after each other, and once they weaken themselves to or weaken each other down a bit, guess what happens? The military swoops in and cleans out the rest. That's what happens, man. I mean, how, how do we go about this? Well, I have a few solutions, or at least ideas. You know, for one, we could stop making everything about racial tension. Because here's the thing, and I know this, that's going to upset a few people here, but here's the thing. Police brutality has been an issue since the police force was established. It was first against, you know, cowboys, and then Irish and Polish immigrants, Chinese immigrants, Asian, well, Asian immigrants in general. It's been going onwards and forwards. And then the 1990s hit, and then you have the Watts riots because black people felt equally oppressed by the Asians as well as the police. And, you know, it's hard not to understand, because, I mean, at that point, 
segregation had basically just ended by a couple of decades. You know, they went through 400 years of slavery, how long of being segregated, having to use separate bathrooms and, you know, assigned seating in public places, even on the bus. You know, they're, they're tired of being oppressed, but I think everyone is at this point, and it's hard, it's not hard to understand. I think everyone's tired of feeling like they're at guilt for some shit. You know, it's, everyone's, like, and this is another issue I have with Black Lives, I'm not saying it's Black Lives Matter, like, the actual group, but you have people that will go out and give public speeches and claim they're on behalf of them without even knowing if they're official members or not, going on these long rants against white people, how we're all the same, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all you're doing is continuing a circle of hatred. Saying all white people are the same is like saying that all black people are the same, or that all Asians are the same. You're just generating more racism with racism. That's all you're doing. It's a vicious cycle, and you're not making it any better by treating it that way. We need to look at it like this. Because as I said before, felons are the ones that are discriminated against the most. And guess what? They're in multiple colors. Or hell, if you want to go into an actual race issue, what about Native Americans? They're the one people that the government won't even consider giving any civil rights to. At all. And I get it, yeah, they chose their own way of life and that they didn't want to conform at first but it seems like lately over the past few decades they have wanted to but yeah I understand that there's more compromise that needs to be made there just like there needs to be more compromise made now with everyone else sitting here and trying to blame groups of people more than the other that one group of people needs to be punished more than the other is just like saying that we all might as well live in segregated communities. It's really the same thing. It's another form of bigotry. It's another form of ignorance. If you're oppressed, you're oppressed. But here's the thing. People of equal races are being oppressed just as much as any other race. It's not determined by race. What it's determined is by class. I mean, Again, let's bring Hillary Clinton, for example, for a second, and the shit that she just went through with the FBI. When the FBI was giving an announcement about their decision, they pretty much straight up said if it was anyone else, they'd be facing consequences for it. Severe fucking consequences. The rich and the wealthy. The upper class and above. Are the ones who are given exceptions and help formulate the laws and who they actually apply to. The middle class is pretty much right as their name implies. They might be better off than other parts of Americans, but they're not exactly in that upper group either. As to where then you hit lower middle class and then fall below that. People falling into that category are more likely to get convicted of certain crimes even without evidence, even without proof. Can we stop that? I mean, maybe if we started there, or even with, again, felons. I personally believe in the Constitution where it states, hey, if you commit a crime and you pay your debts to society by doing the time, that you should be given an equal chance. You know, everyone's like, well, there has to be some sort of limit and depends on the crime. No. No, it shouldn't. Saying that a person should be discriminated against more for a certain thing is again. Just like saying races should be treated differently. It is no fucking different. People make mistakes, yes. They commit crimes, yes. But here's the thing. If you give them that label, you're determining them and their fate for the rest of their lives. I've seen people get out of prison, go to school, go to college, pass through it, do their best to make it out in the world, and they still won't be given a chance. What's that do? It brings them right back into that vicious crime cycle. It's how the system keeps itself sustained. 
because as much money as people are spending in their taxes to support prisoners and them being locked up, which is another reason that I think it's ridiculous. There's also corporations that make money off of it. That's the truth. And again, who falls most likely into that vacuum? lower middle class and below so if once you start tying two and two together you realize where a lot of this is kind of sourcing from right please tell me that some connections are being made in the synapses of your brain and that you're not being completely ignorant here the system is designed to keep it, it's kind of like a belt. It might keep the pants up, but below it, they're treating it like it's just junk. And that's just how it is. So, the way I see it is, do, let's not make any assumptions about these situations just yet. Let's wait until more evidence comes out. But that's my final conclusion, is that we need to start at the source of all these things. We need to find compromise. We need to find equality and balance. This is Iron Popcan with Rancid Hyenas, and I'll see you guys next time.